Speaking of, well, not speaking of, let's take a tangent. Girdles and completeness theorem. I'm curious to know what you see as the applicability or non-applicability of it with regard to how the brain operates. So someone like Penrose or Lucas would say that it implies that the brain is not purely computational in the way that we imagine computation, let's say in a Turing sense, because of so-and-so. I'm sure you know the argument. What do you think? What do you see as what does Girdle's incompleteness theorem has? I don't think it has that much relevance to be, to be honest. Um, I, I read, I remember reading Penrose's book, The Emperor's New Mind, uh, about, well, 30 years ago now, I think shortly after it came out, just at the beginning of you know, when I was just about to go to college. Um, waiting for this enlightenment about why it was going to be relevant. And, um, and it's clearly a very important piece of mathematical philosophy, right? It's, it's telling us that, that there are axioms with any given formal system that cannot be proven to be true within that formal system. Um, and yeah, as I understand, it was a sort of big blow against the Hilbert program of trying to bring closure to, the, to mathematical explanations. Uh, and, but quite what that has to say about the brain i've never been convinced that it has that much to say um and this is partly because you know i don't think the brain is a computer and and so the fact that okay what do you mean when you say that because clearly well again not clearly it it sort of yeah i mean it does get a bit complicated because you know firstly quite what is we have to say, well, what quite, what exactly is Gödel's theorem saying? It seems to be, you know, because of course the Turing class of computation is something where there is a sort of, there is closure, um, and so I guess for me, Gödel, Gödel's theorem, if you apply it to the brain, it may tell you that the brain is not a computer um, mm-hmm. on the reasoning that you know, there are things that we can understand to be true within a formal system that where, proof, where a proof of that doesn't necessarily exist. Um, this is going way back because it's been a long time since I've thought of this, thought about this. But firstly, that doesn't seem that surprising because even if the brain were uh, a computer, a, a computer of this sort, we don't know quite exactly what kind of computer it is. So we don't quite know what sorts of true statements should be not establishable by the kind of computer that the brain might happen to be. Um, but I'm basically, I'm kind of happy with the, with the idea that, that uh, the brain cannot be, it is not a, does not operate according to these principles of logic. You know, that it's not, it doesn't reach true conclusions about truths by, uh, combining these logical operations in, in, in a particular way that, that Gödel's theorem rests on. I mean, Gödel's theorem is a, is, a, is a sort of deduction, I think, isn't it? I mean, it's a real um, strong form of, of logic. Uh, that's Does fine. that put you at odds with some of your colleagues? Because as far as I understand, most of them believe that the brain is some computational device that could be wrong, could just have a bias set. No, I think you're right. I, I think that, I don't know if it sets at odds, but but I... But, well, I mean, firstly, I don't think it particularly... The whole point about Goodell's theorem for Penrose was it's then made a, a claim about consciousness. Yeah. With, and that was a connection that was, to be honest, never very clear to me. It's sort of the idea that, that you know, we consciously experience things that as being true or false, that we know cannot be proved, proven that way by a system of logic through Goodell's theorem, so therefore consciousness is not... Uh, a property of these kinds of formal systems. Again, fine, right? 
still might be the case that the brain does do some information processing. It still might be the case that 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 it is just uh, um, of a you know a constrained or restricted kind. So you can you can I think you can have that. You can accept that the brain is an information processing device, but maybe it doesn't have the kind of class of universality for which Gödel's theorem becomes relevant. Mm. Um, not all computers have to be universal, and but I do also worry that people use that language too loosely when they talk about the brain. It's a very easy thing to say that the brain processes information um, and that consciousness is a form of information processing of some sort that we just don't quite understand yet. 